paragliding fail, who's been a naughty boy, and building the invisible wall. This is Gallery Church Online. Hey guys, welcome to Gallery Church Online. If you've been here a million times, fantastic. If you're totally new, even better. Um, the temperature has dropped this week, guys, and it looks like winter is on its way. Um, so winter's coming. I actually prefer this one. Ah, let's hope these guys are not, though. So, what's happening in the life of the church? Well, we just had gallery dinners. We had a fantastic week this week. If you didn't get involved and you missed out, don't worry. You can come back on October the 28th and we do it all again. So I really encourage you, get plugged into a gallery dinners group. If you're not part of one and you're unsure how to be part of one, then please just drop us an email. You can get the email off our website. We've got a live stream, live stream, how exciting, this Wednesday with Andy and Rach. So go check in, hear what your pastors are saying, hang out. It's like hanging out on the couch and just chilling. And it's like we're all in the same room together. Loads of fun. Go check that out. We've also got Battlefront. That is every Monday and every Friday. And it's at 6.30 a.m. So you can jump in before you go to work um, if you don't leave for work earlier. So feel free to start your day with some prayer. It's amazing. So that's what's happening in the life of Gallery Church. Um, nothing too extreme there, but let me show you something extreme right now. This is something that happened to me when I was in South Africa a few years ago and uh, attempted to do paragliding. So listen guys, that was my first attempt. We actually jumped again after and it, it seemed to work out, although my friend nearly hit a building, but we'll forget about that. I don't know where you're at this week, guys. Maybe you've had a first time thing fail this week, um, but I just want to encourage you, don't give up there. Always give it a second shot. So who's been a naughty boy? Stanley, you naughty boy! Have you seen the news this week? There he is, come on Stanley, you're not wearing a mask there, you've got it half on there, look, there, there. Oh no, Stanley, what are we gonna do? He's been a naughty boy. Look, as we go into a time of worship now, I just wanna encourage you guys that sometimes we're all a bit naughty, aren't we? We're all a little bit naughty inside or outside, and you know, that weight can actually get us down. But I wanna encourage you this week that you can come to God now and worship. You can confess your sins. And it says that actually, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's in Romans 5. You can check that out for yourself, eight to nine. Let's go into a time of worship now as a community, as a church, and why not just unload yourself to God. He already knows what you've done this week, who you've been this week, where you might have lied this week, or whatever else. He already knows all this and he forgives you for it anyway. So why not let's worship him now together. Wait. 
Yeah, thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us in that fantastic time of worship. We just pray now that you'll continue to just guide us and be with us. Would you challenge us, take us to another level as, as human beings, Father God, um, help us to learn about your character as we get into your word now. Um, and if any of you guys have been reading Nehemiah this week, um, but we're continuing our series on Nehemiah, what an amazing story uh, of building that wall. And I'm just going to hand over to Rach now, who's going to speak about building the invisible wall. I hope you've enjoyed the series that we've been doing in Nehemiah, and I hope you've had the opportunity to read the book of Nehemiah. Maybe it's the first book in the Bible that you've completed. I've absolutely enjoyed the messages that Andrew's done, or Andy, or Pastor Andy. They've been absolutely super, and they've been rammed with points. And I, before I even do my message, I just want to encourage you maybe to go back. This is the great thing about having us on screen, is you can go back and you can listen to those messages again, and make notes, and go over, and, and kind of almost fester, is that the right word, fester, on what Andy said because there were some major points in there that I feel I've just kind of missed. And uh, just before I kind of go into the word today, Jesus talks about that, let the seeds be planted in good soil. And I think some of the ways we do that is going over it again, going over it again. So can I encourage you, go back, listen to those messages. Only 10 minutes, come on, we've all got 10 minutes where our dinner's on microwave and all the kettle's boiling, listen to that message again. So today, we're moving a little bit on in Nehemiah. Nehemiah has completed the wall in 52 days. That's good going. That's amazing. I mean, if you've ever seen Grand Design, I don't think I've ever seen anyone complete their house extension. It's more than that, sorry, what they do. In even 52 days, even the most amazing designers don't do that. But Nehemiah pulled everybody together, like Andy was saying. He got everybody building their part of the wall. He got everybody ignoring opposition and pulling together incredibly for 52 days. Now, at the end of that time, Nehemiah actually went back because that's what he promised. He went back to the king and thanked him really for the resources and the time that he'd done to release him to do that. And it, it reckons in Bible studies and commentaries that after about six years, Nehemiah returns back to this area again. And he's got another guy with him called Ezra, another book in the Bible that you can read alongside. It'll give you context a little bit even more to what's happening at this time. And we're now picking it up then of the walls been built. You'd think then, well, is that not the end of Nehemiah? The job's done. But this section of this book now takes a different side. Now it's not talking about what we see on the outside. It's talking about how we need to lead ourselves and lead others internally. How do we build a life with Christ internally? Nehemiah is now actually doing a much harder job than the physical. He's now talking about building up the spiritual side of us, an invisible wall. The first thing that he does is him and Ezra bring back the law. It had been lost. Somehow along the way, people had abandoned it. It was on the dusty shelves of the past and he brings it back. And today's message is all about that. The word of God, the Bible. What does it do? Why is it so important to build that invisible wall within ourselves? Now, I don't want you to switch off. Because when we start talking about the Bible, there are so many things that become barriers. It's boring. It's difficult to read. It's long. It doesn't make sense. Some of it in it I don't agree with. It seems outdated. Listen, I can't tackle all those today, but I want to promise you that we're not avoiding those situations or those questions because they're very important. But I believe still, regardless of any of those questions, that the Bible is a God-breathed message to us in the UK and in the world today. There is relevance in it, 
it is important and it brings life and it builds us up internally as if a wall was being built. And so I want to encourage you to put aside your preconceptions about the Bible if you've tried to read it before and listen to this message about why it's important and why Nehemiah emphasised for everybody in this big city to gather together to hear the word of God. And this is what it says in Nehemiah 8. When the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra, that's the guy I mentioned who was a priest, the scribe to bring the book, the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. And then he read from it in the open square. We think about that because he didn't have a microphone. So he must have really had to shout. That was in front of the water gate from morning until midday before the men and women. That is a long time to be reading. This is 10 minutes, guys. He read this all day to them and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. That's a great bit to end on. The people began to open their ears. In other words, perhaps the things, the barriers that I've just spoken about, they started to lose and they began to look at the word of God again, this book of the law as it's described there. Three things I want to tell you about the Bible that you see journeying through the next few books in Nehemiah, next few chapters, sorry, in Nehemiah, that I want to encourage us. The first thing is why the book of the Word of God is so important is because it brings intimacy, it brings a relationship. You see, the Bible is a love story. It's about a God who cares for man. It's about a God who's driven towards us with compassion. You know, we often, how does God, how do we know God loves us? Because the Bible tells us so. How do we know that he cares for us? Because the Bible gives us that promise and that reassurance. The messages in there, the hope in there should awaken us to the reality that God loves us. When we read the word of God, we're able to connect with God and know that he isn't a judgmental God, but he's a God that through the pages gives people a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. Jeremiah 31, another book in the Bible from verse three says this, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I've drawn you with unfailing kindness. You see, even that verse just brings hope within me. God has drawn me. He loves me with everlasting kindness. How incredible is that? Psalm 136 verse 26 says this, his love endures forever. When I read that, I realise my love fails. My love let God down, lets people down. But God's love endures forever. We could ponder on that verse and speak on that verse, just that verse for a whole 10 minutes. And that's what the Bible does to us. It brings intimacy. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know if God loves you? Read the word of God. Read the stories of Jesus. Read what he did, how he went to the cross for us. It brings that intimacy. And as the people in Nehemiah began to read this, they began to weep and they began to return back to God. They began to turn their lives back and want a relationship with him. The second thing that happened, and I believe what the Bible does, is it people began to start to praise and worship. They began to sing out praise songs to God. Why did that come from reading the Bible? And I think it is because as we read the word of God, we began to see the attributes and character of God. It's not just about the song anymore or about I like that tune or I like the piano or I like how Beck's voice sounds, but it's about actually the word of God is a living and true word and it shows me that God is faithful. He's a shield, he's a rock, he's a deliverer, he's an everlasting father, he's the 
a high tower. And I know that because the Bible tells me. And as I read that, it makes me lift my eyes. I want to worship the characteristics of God. I'm not worshipping the song. I'm not worshipping the mood. I'm not worshipping how I feel. I'm worshipping the God of the character of who he is. You know, we can have one part of just the character of God. For example, he is our provider. And we can just begin to think about that, how he provides in every season, how he will never let us down, how he'll always be that supply for us. And it brings within us an element where even in our circumstance, we can just worship him because he's just revealed through the word of God something for us. I love that. You know, David, he reads the Psalms and he, 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 sorry, he writes the Psalms and his worship is incredible, but it's really clear he knows God because of the law of God. Incredible. The third thing that happens as the, as the people begin to read and explore the book with Ezra and Nehemiah is that they are realigned to some good habits. They're reminded of how to live well. Now I know what you're saying. This is the bit of the Bible that we don't like, the rules, that what, it's telling us what to do, it's so restrictive. Some of them seem so out of dated. A few years ago, we went to a caravan, a few years ago, a long time ago, I'm trying to make out I'm really young, with my mum and dad, and we stayed at this caravan, and I don't know what happened, but there was a huge wasp's nest, I believe, outside the caravan, because wasps just kept coming in all the time. And the reason why I remember this is not because of the wasp, but how they were murdered, how they were killed, guys. Because how they were killed was my dad had an enormous black Bible that he would just swat and bang and slam down on these wasps. And I always think of that image and I think sometimes that's how people think the word of God is. He's just slamming them. It's just they're flying around and bang. That's what the Bible is telling them. It's, it's squashing their ambition. It's squashing their ability. Listen, that's not what the Bible does. You know, people got caught in all these rules and regulations. When Jesus came, a man came to him and said, How, what do I do? What's the greatest commandments? What, it, what do I have to do? What laws, what rules do I have to keep? And Jesus kept it simple. And that's what we need to do. He said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. That's the first commandment actually in the, in the 10 commandments that Moses gave. And then the second thing he said was, love others as you love yourself. You know, if we just kept those two commands, guys, that would be an incredible turnaround and an invisible wall being built. How can we do it? We have to read the Bible because loving people is hard work. I want to end with this story and it's by a lady called Elizabeth Elliot. Elizabeth Elliot, her and her husband were called to be missionaries. They were missionaries at a time in the 1950s, late 1950s, and they decided that they wanted to go to a small island called Aku in Ecuador. They felt called there, they got themselves together, they didn't obviously have all perhaps the, the skills and talents that you would expect people to have now if they're going to unreached people groups, but they just decided to go. As soon as they landed in 1956, Elizabeth Elliot's husband, Jim Elliot, was murdered. As soon as they entered the island, the people were so scared and intimidated, they just killed him. Elizabeth Elliot went back and she felt God say, you need to return. And for two years, Elizabeth Elliot returned to that island and she preached to those guys and forgave them and spoke and gave them the love of God, which what she was called to do. How did she do that? She didn't do that just through good mind thinking, just through listening to a few podcasts. She did it through the word of God, because this is what she says, and this quote I absolutely love. The word of God I think of as a straight edge, which shows up our own crookedness, our thinking, and we line it up to the straight edge. Man, she must have had some right crooked thinking, and I would, I would justify it in some ways, towards these people. But when she read the word of God, the love of God poured in, and the straight edge realigned her to do the right thing, and to forgive, and to move forward. What an incredible story. Even in the most difficult circumstances, we can be told how to live well, and in a way that will bless us, 
and bless others. The Bible's not full of rules. Two commandments you need to keep. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love others as you have yourself. You know, Andy was talking and he shared a psalm with me, 119, and I wanna give this as a prayer actually at the end. And it's gonna be a prayer over you about the word of God in your life, that it would build up a wall within you. And this is what it says. It's in the message version, starting in verse eight. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learn the pattern of your righteous ways. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk off and leave me. How can a young person live a clean life? Be carefully, by carefully reading the map of your word. I'm single-minded in pursuit of you. Don't let me miss the road signs you're posting. I've banked your promises in the vault. God, I just thank you for that. And I thank you, God, that your word is a living and active, breathing word. And forgive us, God, where just like the people in Nehemiah, it becomes a dusty and forgotten thing. I pray that you would breathe into your church again the importance of the word of God. I pray that it would direct us. It would be a map to us. It would be a signpost to us. It would be a bank of promises to us that we could invest in and draw upon. I pray God today that your word would speak to people, that they would find in your word life in this season. They would find support, they would find direction through the word of God. We pray for anybody today who doesn't know you, that even through reading your word, they would begin to be awakened to a relationship with you. Amen. Listen guys, get a study plan, get a journal, listen to things on podcast, read the Bible with other people on the Zoom, do everything you can creatively to make the word of God come alive. God bless you, build up your internal war. I love you very much. So important, so important that we get the spiritual perspective of life really um, and apply that in ourselves and I just want to pray now that really that word will be applied in our lives but also on the back of this I just want to pray that um, anyone out there who that's really spoken to and you might not actually know Jesus, you might, might not be walking with Jesus at the moment and I want to give you that opportunity right now. So why don't you just uh, pray this prayer with me. Um, it's, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, Father God, that you died for me. Um, Lord, I've not always been the best. I've not always done the right things. But Lord, I give all that to you now, and I want to walk with you. I want to start a journey with you, Father God. Um, would you forgive me for all my past things, Father God? Allow me now to move forward with you in. So if you've said that prayer this morning, firstly, absolutely incredible. What an amazing decision you've made to give life a go with Jesus by your side. It's so awesome. Head over to our website, click on the Follow Jesus button, and it allows us to be able to contact you and just help you in your journey of faith, even send you some resources. Amazing decision. So that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for coming along, hanging out and checking out Gallery Church online. It's been amazing to have you along with us. Remember, guys, stay safe this week. Don't be a Stanley. Wear your mask. And we'll catch you next week, same time, same place. This has been Gallery Church online.
awesome. Fantastic! Not wearing, uh, hang on, let's start again. <laughs> what should I say? Rip off from Game of Thrones. I can't do the voice of the king. Well, we've got, we'll do that again. We'll do that again. We'll do that again. Felt like you were just about to go over the edge. You're just thinking, I had to do the paragliding one. What are we saying? What are we saying? Like that, yeah. I nearly died. Uh, ha 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 ha, brilliant. What is Boris's dad's name? <laughs> see you now as we go into the worship and I'll get my phone as well and see what's going on. Hello? Ah, uh, you're all right, mate. So I called you by accident. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, brilliant, mate. Cheers, mate. All right, see you in a bit. Bye, bye. Quiet. Nice guy. Oh, yeah, and the phone went, didn't it? Bit wall wall, but for us, even in our transgressions or something like that. Um, yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, I like that.